evolution and development. It goes through these couple of stages. So it starts from the stage that's called archaic. It goes to one that's called magic, which is basically almost like you said with a kid. Um, they, they see that symbol, and by manipulating that symbol, the what that symbol represents gets affected, like voodoo, literally. That's that magic level uh, worldview. And then you go to mythic, which is another word for that is fundamentalist or mm, absolutistic. And that's the, the, the people who really believe in the, Bi in the Bible. You know, Jesus really did part the Red Seas. Uh, uh, Moses really did part the Red Seas. Jesus was born from a biological virgin, that kind of thing. And then it goes to the next stage, which we get into um, conventional or, or world-centric. But it's actually, but this this stage is called rational. This is where we get to science. This is where we get into being able to take a third person, uh, objective perspective. Okay, and all of these again transcend and include the one before. They're all stacked up on each other. And then we get to the next stage after rational, or after can another word for that is conventional, and that's the stage that you're talking about. It's the relativistic stage. It's that it's that multiculturalism that. Um, Postmodernism, that's what that's another name for it. Okay, and it's that it's it sees that everyone everyone has a everyone has a truth and they're all equal. Is it right? necessary to take that step though? Is it necessary? Yeah, do, mm. do, you, do you think so, it's necessary to, to go almost into like a postmodernist society? Only if you want to get to the next level, I suppose. Yeah. So this how, do we, how, do we, how do we know that's our next level? How do we know that's like okay? We know that that's where we're heading towards now, but how do we know that is what should be our next level? Okay. How do we know it should be the next level? Hmm. <clears throat> well, I would say that it it is it is the next level because that's where everything has been heading in terms of um, what's already happening here. Right, so the, the researcher for this, his name is uh, Claire Graves, um, and there's a book by students called Spiral Dynamics. Mm, <laughs> but oh, basically, that's, a, that's rich. Yeah, it basically shows how human development in a in a culture or group goes through these levels and grows. So it's not like you can skip stages, but everyone has to go through these. Uh, everyone has to grow through these stages, uh, the same way that. Uh, Jean Piaget showed that a child has to go through going from from egocentric or pre-operational to formal operational to post-operational. Uh, this is just the way that humans grow. So, but well, we we mm -hmm. we uh, um, it, it's not an important part of of a kid to start developing relativist views, and we don't we can view a, a child's development. And objectively label it, whereas our progression as society doesn't necessarily. We don't know what's coming next. We don't ha, like. How do we know that the postmodernist uh, kind of view of, of relativism is good? That's basically what I'm asking. How do, how do we? Cause we we do seem to be going into it. Uh, that's uh, yeah, for sure. But is it is it wrong to should, it, uh, should we still struggle to find our moral absolutes? Oh, we should still continue to to to, to strive and go. For what we think is better and better, but it's the most true, the most correct at this point, or it's it's the most true and correct as compared on that uh, on that hierarchy of the ones that came before, of um, compared to rationalism, the, the rational stage or the magic stage or the mythic stage, right? Because it considers more more worldview, it considers more perspectives in that sense. Does that make... Yeah, it, does, it, it, make make sense. it makes sense, um, but what I would note that is in, in uh, I feel like it can't, we can't go into a postmodern society and still account for our progression out of a modernist society and still have that within us because it kind of contradicts the idea that there that was a part of the enlightenment and whatnot, uh, that there is an objective truth to be reached. And if we acknowledge that there are different ways to come to an objective truth, then sure. doesn't, doesn't that negate that, 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 that uh, stage? 
Say that again. I think I understand what you're saying, but can you repeat that? Okay, it, like uh, in our in our stages of the development of, of, our, of our culture uh, or of our yeah. the development of morals and, and stuff. Um, in the yeah. Enlightenment was was uh, the development of kind of rationality and whatnot. When that came about, exactly. a part of the uh, the fire behind that was our our uh, I look into empiricism and coming to objective realities. But does mm-hmm. adopting a postmodern stage can that still include that modernism and that empiricism within it if we no longer accept that there that that there are objective truths and just view it almost relative can we still account for yeah. can we still uh, have that integral stage or or does that completely negate that stage then because we're kind of contradicting the idea of one truth okay so that's so with any any stage there's always something good about it, but there's also something that uh, that's not so good at it. There's always the pros and cons. But the higher you go up in the, in the scale of, <clears throat> on that hierarchy of, uh, of that, that ladder of development, the more true it becomes. So postmodernism stage, relativism stage, um, it includes all the rational, it's able to see all and, and have all that rational uh, ideology and capacity. But at least it considers um, all of the ones, all the perspectives even before, like the magic, the mythic, all that stuff. So yes, but the problem, see the problem with the rational stage is that it's not very sensitive. It doesn't consider the feelings of all the other groups, you know, because it's all about science, all about like achievement business. There isn't much feeling into it. It's only when we get to multi- multiculturalism, relativism, that we start considering the feelings in, and... Uh, the perspectives of other groups in that kind of way. Now, the problem with uh, multiculturalism, relativism, postmodernism, um, if it if it gets too very unhealthy, is that it says that its truth is the absolute truth. So, relativism tries to say that there's no truth; it's all relative. But the irony is that that them saying that, yeah. they're saying it like it's an objective mm-hmm. one truth, right? And right. if you study Hegel's work, you kind of you kind of see the pattern there of the dialectic. Every every stage we go up gives feedback, and the pendulum swings back and forth, right? It's actually between, well, yeah, yeah, between right. one extreme to the other, and that's how that's how if it, they create a synthesis of of, of and development corrects itself. Through going through the extremes until it uh, it finds that that middle way, that midpoint, and it keeps going. And then that uh, midpoint and is adopted as the new thesis, and then another antithesis is uh, introduced, and then yeah. another synthesis, and it, it uh, continuously, gradually develops. Yeah. Yeah, that's why they call it the spiral dynamics, because you're literally doing an upward spiral in that sense. <laughs> you're always going actually from from um, from a very individual centered stage to a uh, more collective group centered stage so the so the 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 the, <coughs> the tribal or archaic stage is very group centered and then you go to the the uh, the magic almost like a warrior kind of stage where it's very individual then you get to mythic which is very group centered right like uh, fundamentalists, Christians, whatever, they're all very group, ethnocentric centered. Then you get to an individual kind of stage, which is uh, rationalist, the rationalist stage, where it's very achievement oriented. And then you go to that postmodern or relativistic multicultural stage, where it's very group oriented feeling stage. Now, I didn't mention there's actually one more stage above that, and which gives the namesake for integral theory. It's called the integral stage. And this includes all the ones before it. But what's special about the integral stage is because we're actually, it's so vastly different from what came before it. They actually put it into a separate tier. So everything before integral, they call tier one. And everything from integral and beyond, uh, more or less, is called tier two. Because all of tier one, they don't even know that these stages exist. They think it's all flatland especially postmodernism, it just puts everything into a flatland. Every perspective is the same. They're all equal value. Integral, theory, integral stage sees that there's different perspectives. They're, they 
they all have some truth to them, but they're not all equal. Obviously, someone who think, who believes in some voodoo magic sort of thinking and worldview is not going to be cor as correct as someone who thinks at a rational stage or a postmodern stage. So that's uh, that's the integral stage. It has the pluses of all the ones before. It has that that comprehensiveness of of perspectives as postmodernism, but it also recognizes that there's not a flatland, that there is some sort of objectiveness to it, and that's the strength that comes from relativism and the ones before and so on. Uh, I just want to let you know that um, uh, at the beginning of the conversation, I decided to press the recording again, so I got all of that. I'm going to add that. Yes! Yes! Uh, yes! But, uh, but that, that was a very good explanation. That, that was a very oh, good explanation. God. Um, Very well put. Who? Okay, so what authors can... Can we read to get a, a, a better understanding of integral theory if we want to look search or, or get a deeper understanding of it? What authors would you okay. recommend? So the prominent philosopher is a guy named Ken Wilber, and he's basically looked at all the the, the fields of human development, um, including Eastern you know the, the Eastern mysticism, religion and developmental psychology, psychotherapy, and basically put it all on a map. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So obviously there's going to be some controversy there of what's true and what's not. So I'd actually advise if you want uh, to look deeper into it, look at the actual researchers there, the science, because Ken Wilber is not actually a scientist. He's just a, a philosopher. Um, look at people like... Abraham Maslow, right? His his hierarchy of needs follows that same pattern of going from egocentric uh, all the way to world centric and cosmocentric, right? You have. Um, are you familiar with Abraham Maslow, Zach? I uh, I recognize the name and the hierarchy hierarchy of needs. I um, I'm familiar with the the concept. I don't remember it in particular though, but yeah. I I do remember going over it in class. Yeah, it goes from um, like your 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 physiological needs of just being yeah. able to survive to all the way up to self-actualization. Yeah, and, and, and each even, step is necessary to reach the next step. Yeah, sort, sort of how... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you see that pattern there. That's probably the easiest uh, entry point for, for me explaining this to people because most people are grounded in self actual in uh, the hierarchy of needs. They already know what's going on. And uh, it actually goes up to self-transcendence. That's the final level. Not people. Not many people know that, but on his deathbed, Abraham Maslow was like, okay, the final level is actually self-transcendence, not self-actualization. He That's, said that uh, at the last moment. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. He's mentioned it in a couple articles, too, but oh. people, you know, it's just been quoted so many times in many psychology textbooks. Oh, self-actualization. That's a top. That's a top. But no, it's self-transcendence. That's when you even go beyond just actualizing yourself and you, you get to actualizing other people. Oh. That's, that's the ultimate. That's yeah. juicy. Um, I'm going to go okay. ahead and, uh, yeah. or this one's gone on for almost 15 minutes now, but uh, here, go ahead and finish what you're saying and then we'll wrap it up. The same pattern goes there of tier one and tier two. So Abraham Maslow called that first tier, he called them D needs or deficiency needs. That's the, the, the safety, the security, the self-esteem, um confidence, love and connection, <clears throat> that's all deficiency needs. It's when you get to tier two, or what he called being needs, the be needs, that's self-actualization and self-transcendence. That's when you come from a place of abundance. Those are the needs that you that don't come from lack, but come from you being uh, full of yourself in a good way. Mm. So that's the step so we're kind of... Muslim. So that, that's the yeah. kind of... We're, we're moving into the... That, that step of se of self actualization, sort of as a society as a whole. Now, that's what integral theory proposes. Yeah. So the the next stage after postmodernism or relativism um, <clears throat> is the integral stage, and we see that people are slowly moving into that uh, into that stage, ever so slowly, and. What's good about that stage is that it recognizes that people actually go through levels of development, and it's not all flatland. And from from a humanistic standpoint, 
why that's important is because we can we know that people have different perspectives then. We can see that people see the world in different ways. That it's not just, okay, you see it this way, I see it this way, your religion versus my religion. Even, even within religions, because there's different levels of each religion, different viewpoints following that developmental scale. So people in religions get, get confused and they fight. It's like, why, right? Now we know why. Because a, uh, a ethnocentric Islam is not the same as an integral Islam. And if we know that, then, okay, we can start to make better, uh, better laws, better governments, better whatever from understanding that there's different ways of seeing the world. That they're not all the same. Exactly. Oversimplifying is oversimplifying, right? Yeah. So we want to, uh, we don't want to oversimplify things. We want to get it as accurate as possible. And thank you so much for TI. For this yeah, this was a very, very, very entertaining discussion. Yes, yeah, and I'm so happy that we got a chance to share this with the audience. You know, it's and I hope. I mean, my contribution, I think, is just my enthusiasm, my 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 unconscious fe, just my my facial gestures and how excited I am, and how you guys are, how you know, David, you're you know like. 26, 20 something, sharing these ideas with a Zach, an 18 year old, uh, who has now the power and the capability to to kind of share this with other people, um, you know, as 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 he gets more comfortable understanding this and making sure that he understands it first, as well as practicing it first as well. Hmm. Seems like we have a new challenger. Uh, um, Atari. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this recording up real quick. Uh, thank you for watching, talking famous people. Thank you, famous person David, for coming on and and, and uh, talking about uh, integral theory and integral philosophy. Uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>